trading day. Well, we're going to take a bit of a closer look at bond market action now. Let's bring in Simon Michelle from Fig Securities. Simon, good afternoon. Great to see you there. These global yields bouncing off record lows to finally follow equities higher. Good afternoon, Leanne. Yes, absolutely. So we saw yesterday that uh, while we saw equity markets moving up, yields continue to fall, and that was really on um, the continued demand for, for bonds. Uh, we've seen that reverse today, and uh, we've seen a bit of a recovery. Yields up about five basis points, so, uh, you know, it certainly looks like people are moving uh, back out of that safety and into uh, more uh, other asset allocations. And I guess a lot of it came off the back of uh, Japan's Prime Minister sort of ordering this new round of stimulus, reducing the demand for these... Uh, safe haven government bonds. Is that why, uh, part of the reason why we're seeing, you know, these, these moves? Look, I think so. You know, I think the market, uh, you know, is starting to feel a little bit more comfortable around some of the volatility we've seen. Mm -hmm. um, certainly expecting further stimulus. Uh, we expect to see the Bank of England lower rates, for example, later this week. Uh, I think uh, an RBA uh, rate cut here in Australia is certainly not off the cards, depending upon that, how that CPI prints later this month. Uh, and I think the other thing is uh, a view that the U.S. will con have to continue to, del to delay. And uh, I think market virtually uh, pricing no further increase from the U.S. Fed. So pretty positive sentiment, I think, Leanne. Yeah. Okay, so later in the week, I mean, as I guess as we head sort of throughout the week, do you think we can expect to see stronger demand for, for some of these options, the 10 years and 30 yields and so forth? Yeah, well, that's interesting. We had uh, the softest demand for a U.S. three-year Treasury option last night, um, the softest since 2009. I think there's a couple of things driving that. Obviously, uh, you know, very, very low rates at the moment. We're certainly seeing greater demand out in the 10- and 30-year treasuries as investors are happy to take on additional yield with a view that they don't really see those longer-term rates moving up anytime soon. So I think um, you've hit the nail on the head. I'd, I'd like to see how demand goes for the 10-year uh, and the 30-year options we get later this week in the States. You should see higher demand for those. Okay. Um, Aussie yields as well. Um, I guess a lot of expectation now around the RBA and so forth with a cash rate where it is. The RBA, I suppose, is in a much better position relative to a lot of its other peers who have almost exhausted a lot of their options. Well, that's right. And that, that's certainly been noted that, uh, you know, at least our central bank still has a, a little up its sleeve. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as we've seen, uh, Bank of Japan, as you mentioned, and uh, through Europe, uh, on the back of this volatility, more countries just uh, drift into negative territory. They're running out of ammunition. So, you know, at least here in, the, uh, in Australia, uh, at a cash rate of 1.75, there's quite a bit of room to move. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, given that uh, global movement, that global downward movement in rates, that uh, the RBA is going to have to pretty match it. Uh, we've seen the dollar strengthen. Uh, you know, if that dollar keeps moving up, um, it's out of uh, Glenn Stevens' hands. He's going to have to lower the cash rate here as well. Yeah, good point. All right, Simon, we'll leave it there. Really appreciate you joining us. Thank Have you. Have a lovely day. Thank you.